Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by MFC middleweight Luke Harris. Luke, how are you? Good, Mike. Thanks for having me on. Sure, no problem. Glad to have you. Luke, you got a fight coming up August 10th at MFC 34. How's training been going for the fight? Oh, man, it's going awesome. I mean, uh, got about three weeks to go. I'm in great shape now, just fine tuning some last some, you know, final things or whatever. I had a couple of my teammates fight this past weekend at UFC 149. Um, you probably saw Ryan Jimmel and Mitch Clark. So, I mean, that was, uh, now I get a, you know, more of a chance to focus on myself and uh, things, are, things are going well. You mentioned Ryan Jimmo. How happy were you for him that he was able to get a knockout in seven seconds? Because there's a lot of people out there who say, oh, he's a boring fighter, he's a point fighter, he's this, he's that. How happy were you for him that he was able to silence those critics? Oh, man, it's, it's great. You know, as a, as a fighter, you know, and Ryan's probably the same guy I am, you know, we don't pay a whole lot of attention to critics and stuff like that. I mean, you know, certain fights in your career, it's, it's just the way it works. You sometimes you have to fight a little more reserved, you know, to get where you want to go. I mean, with, with Ryan, I think that was more the case in MSC, and now that uh, he had the opportunity to fight in the UFC, you know, there's... Uh, Is he going to be cornering you now for this fight? Um, yeah, he probably will be. I'm not 100% for sure. I usually have uh, you know, my wrestling coach, my stand-up coach, and also my main MMA coach, uh, Jeff Montemaro, in my corner. But it's, it's always a possibility. Uh, my, my wrestling coach, he's actually going to be away at the Olympics. His, uh, his girlfriend actually qualified for the Olympics, so I mean, he might be in London, and then that'll open up the spot. And Yeah, Jim would be my now your opponent, Joseph Henley, how much do you know about him? I know a fair bit. I mean, he's, uh, he's undefeated. He trains, uh, trains at a good camp in the States, and uh, he was on the Ultimate Fighter, you know. But it's, uh, stylistically, I think it's a great matchup for me. Based on what you've seen him do in the past, do you think he'll be your toughest test so far? Yeah, you know, I, it's, it's tough to really say. You know, I go, in, uh, I go into every fight with that mindset, so yeah, I'd say... Yes, for sure. You know, I thought that last fight, I thought that the fight before, you know, I mean, every fight's a new fight, and I mean, regardless of the fighter's skills or his record, you know, he's uh, he's there to bring it, you know. So, yeah, definitely, I'd say he's uh, my, tough, my toughest test yet. You lost your pro debut, but since then you've ripped off nine consecutive first-round submissions. What did you learn from that first fight? Oh, man, I learned a lot about myself. I think... Uh, when you take a loss like that, you really you really see who you are as a fighter. You know, definitely at that point, I wouldn't say I was very ready for MMA yet. You know, I didn't have a whole lot of striking, and um, you know, I was pretty much just going in there with my my grappling background. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, not to say I didn't have the skills, but more so that uh, you know, it's a whole different arena. You know, it's a whole different arena than uh, than what I was used to with competing in judo and jiu-jitsu. But, uh, yeah, you definitely learn about yourself a lot, you know. I mean, I think uh, a lot of guys, once you take that loss, you decide whether whether truly you are a fighter or you want to you know, hang up the gloves and go home. No fighter ever wants to lose, but considering that it happened real early in your career, was that maybe a, a good thing for you, that you were able to learn something about yourself? Oh, yeah, I, wouldn't, I would never take it back, mm-hmm. you know. Like, the only thing is, it would have been nice to do it as more an amateur than a pro, but, yeah, yeah. I'd never... And now these these nine submissions in a row, they've all come in the first round. Is it just is it just coincidence, or you know, is it something you're doing? You know, how, how's this continue to happening? Because it's surprising a bunch of people. Yeah, well, you know, I'm I'm obviously uh, I'm obviously have a grappling base, you know, a fairly aggressive grappler, and you know, coming from a judo grab background, you know, I'm aggressive to get those submissions. You know, in judo they don't give you a whole lot of time to play on the ground. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think. Uh, you know, it's just where the fights have ended up. You know, I, I obviously I would have taken the KO. You know, I I like to finish fights. I prefer not to go to decision. But I mean, with all those fights, I definitely didn't didn't expect them to uh, end in the first round. But if there's an opportunity, I'm gonna you know end it as fast as I can. 
You're kind of like the male Ronda Rousey in a way because of your judo background and the way you've been able to win all these fights by first round submission. People know what's coming and they still can't stop it. Is that just because you've been doing this forever? Yeah, it's possible. You know, mm-hmm. I started doing judo and you know learning submissions and stuff when I was eight years old. So mm-hmm. yeah, I've been doing it a while. I'm, I'm 34 now. Mm-hmm. Now, Luke, there's been a lot of talk that should you get past Joseph Henley, you would get a title shot. Has Mark Pavlich said anything to you about that? Yeah, he's never said it directly, but I mean, uh, it's always a possibility. I mean, anytime you you win a fight, you know, it's uh, it definitely opens some doors. You know, that being said, losing a fight you closes doors, right? So mm-hmm. right now, I, I'm not too worried about what happens after the fight. You know, my focus is really on this opponent winning the fight, putting on a great f- performance. You know, I. Uh, I love fighting in my hometown, you know, there's, we kind of get a lot of fan support, you know, a lot of guys from the gym and stuff, so really excited about this one. You mentioned the part about fighting in front of your home crowd, usually for a lot of fighters that adds a lot of pressure, but based on your last couple fights that have all been in your hometown, it seems like it doesn't affect you. Is fighting in front of your hometown, is that something that motivates you, gets you pumped up, and is possibly a reason why you're doing so well? Yeah, it's definitely a possibility. I mean, uh, I love it. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, we probably have like uh, 200 members at the Hayabusa Training Center, and I mean, most of them come out to the fights with their, you know, friends and family and everything. You know, we just pack the place, and it's exciting, man. Like, I uh, definitely don't want to let them down. You know, I probably feel that pressure as well, but I mean, uh, I'm more excited to, like, get that finished. So, yeah, I think it's a driving force for sure. Now the fight with Joseph Henley. What are you anticipating him doing? Are you anticipating that he's going to try to avoid the ground at all costs? Are you anticipating that he's going to try to test you and see how good you are on the ground? You know, what exactly are you anticipating going into this fight? Well, you know, I never I never really plan that far into it. You know, mm-hmm. I, a lot of times I plan the first exchange, and then, you know, I'm ready to go wherever the fight goes. Yeah. I'm excited to show what I can do standing, you know, as well. Uh, you know, most people have seen my ground, but, you know, they have, they have no idea, you know, what I've been working on with my stand-up or whatever. But, um, you know, I'm, I'll take the fight wherever it goes. If you can stop me from taking him down, then, you know, it's going to be a stand-up war. But that being said, you know, I won't necessarily press the beat down. Um, I'm going to see what he does, you know. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good one, that's for sure. I can guarantee a finish. Usually, fights that take place in the ring, they favor the striker, but... For you, that seems like it hasn't been a problem at all because you've been able to take guys to the ground and submit them. Which do you prefer, the cage or the ring, or does it not matter to you? Um, no, it doesn't matter to me. Like mm-hmm. I, uh, I was a training center, we have a cage, so I mean, mm-hmm. I train in a cage every day. Um, I probably prefer the cage. You know, I can have more tricks in the cage, I guess. But mm-hmm. that being said, you know, I, I don't really care where the fight is. You know, it could be in the... Uh, could be in a parking lot. So. <laughs> right. It doesn't seem to affect me too much. You said you see a finish happening in this fight. Is there any particular way you see the fight ending? Is there any way that you've sort of visualized it in your head, the way the fight's going to end? Um, yeah, I've, I've visualized it a lot of different ways. You mm-hmm. know, visualization is a big part of my uh, big part of my training, actually. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I see it going anyway, right? I see it by... Uh, Always me winning, but submission or, you know, knockout, for sure. Luke, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Yeah, well, mainly I'd like to thank uh, Hayabusa, mm-hmm. obviously, and the Hayabusa Training Center. Right. You know, I have uh, some other sponsors jumping on board for this fight, and uh, thank you very much as well. And, uh, yeah, don't miss this fight. You know, this is going to be an exciting one. So it's going to definitely launch my career, and, uh, you know, I'm going Luke, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck at MFC 34, August 10th against Joseph Henley. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks for having me on.